Welcome to another week of this devlog series. A special thanks to Shannon Galway for being the official sponsor of this video. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and also hitting that notification bell. And before we begin, just a word for Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can find over 27,000 different online classes ranging from design, business and tech. If you use the link in the description, you will get two months of free use. So be sure to check it out now. The link is in the description. For Monday, I started to implement the cups page, which is just a grid of buttons where you can press and set the amount of milliliters that you want to add. So for example, we can select the 500 milliliters and if we press the button, we can see that that is added to the database and then reflected in the app in real time. So let's move over to the code and see what I did. So what we started doing is actually just going to the cups page and started to return a gridview.count. We then just set the cross axis count to 3 and then the main axis spacing and cross axis spacing to 18 which is just between the elements. We have the shell aspect ratio and I will explain that as we go and then adding padding around the whole grid view. So for the chili I'm simply using a custom widget which is just a cup amount button and then we can add the amount. If I didn't add anything that will be a custom amount button. So we can see that if we don't add anything, the amount will be set to zero. So in the start of the build method, we are just getting the drink block. So the bottom is just a container with a column and the first item will be the inkwell container, which is just the placeholder. So if the amount is zero, we will simply call the set custom amount function. And if it's not, we will just call the set amount. Then we simply use a stream builder to listen to the amount that we have selected. So if we then just take a look at the placeholder, we can see that the selected amount which we get from our block is equal to the amount of the button, then we will set the color to blue, or else we'll just set it to black. And then we simply have an if stated if the amount is not equal to zero, then we'll just display the text amount milliliters, and if not, we'll set that to custom. And now to see how the set amount function works. So if we take a look at the drink block, we can see that we have a new stream or a behavior subject. And we can see that that is pushing out the selected amount. So if we then scroll down, we can see that we have a setter function, which just sets the amount to the new selected drink amount and then pushes that out the stream. So during Monday, we got this implementation working where we could select a amount. So what we did on Tuesday was simply setting a custom amount which would just give us this pop-up and we can set a custom amount and then if we go to the home page we can then press the button and see that custom amount added to the database. So if we go to the cup amount button we can see that everything is pretty much the same so we will simply just scroll down to the function which is just called set custom amount. You can see that this is calling a show dialog function, which is just opening this custom amount pop-up. So as we have an input field, we'll simply use a text editing controller to store the value and also an arrow icon in case they don't put any value in and press OK. So we return a dialog with a column and this column will contain a padding for the first child. So for the child of this padding, we will have a column and this column will pretty much hold all of our different widgets except the main button, which it says OK. So the texts are not anything special. The more complicated thing is going to the text field. So I actually wanted a bit bigger text field. So I added a padding with a padding of all the sides of eight. So this is just a simple text field. We just added some more design values to it. So first off, we just set the controller to the controller. And we also have this on submitted and this will just simply call the set value when we press the OK button on the keyboard. We have autofocus to true if we just open the dialog and we also set the keyboard type to number. For the decoration we simply just give it a suffix icon and text and also a fill color of grey with the shade of 300. And just make sure that you have fill to true or else this wasn't actually showing. And to then just make the text field rounded, we simply use a border radius of circular five. And now we can see at the bottom of the first column, we have the OK button. 
So the K button is very simple. It's simply just returning a flat button, which we have at the bottom of the dialog. And if we check at the top, we set the padding to zero. We also have our own press, which is called the set value. And this time we actually use the controller text value. And then we set the border radius of the bottom left and right to circular. So it actually fits the dialog. We then set the button color to the accent color and then just simply used returning a child of container with a center and a text of OK. So if we then scroll down and look at the set value function, we can see that it takes an amount as a string and also a drink block. We first initialize a new icon variable with the error icon and also a red color. And then we check if the amount string is empty, then we're going to simply return and set the state of the icon. If it's not empty, we will simply set the arrow icon to null so it doesn't show in the dialog. And then we just parse the amount of string and then set that to the drink amount. And then after that, we simply pop the dialog. So on Wednesday, we can see that we implemented the icon in the button. So if we just go to the caps page and just change the milliliters, then go back to the home page we can see that we actually have a square and then the drink 500 milliliters. This also works with a custom amount. So if we set that to 950, we can see that that reflects in the button. And everything else we have done on Monday and Tuesday is working as expected. So what I just did was navigate into the circle button and we then went to the build function. So instead of just returning the progress circle in the child of the material button, we simply just wrap that in a stack so we can then return a new widget, which we just called the drink glass with amount. So the drink glass with amount will be responsible for displaying the placeholder and also the amount with the drink block. And that's why we are passing the drink block. We actually didn't need to do that. I just did it when I refactored. So we could just use provider and then get the drink block in the build function. We then just returned a stream builder with the out selected amount. And we can see that I set the snapshot.data to the selected amount, so it's a bit easier to read. We then simply return a column with a height of 60 and also a text of selected amount. So one bug we actually had also, if we would start the app, it wouldn't select the 200 milliliter to start with. And the reason for this is because when we initiated the drink block, we didn't actually input the selected amount. So we can see then after the init, we are used calling our in selected amount and then passing our in selected drink amount variable. So for Thursday, as I usually develop on a Windows computer, I actually had to use my Mac here to test and verify that the app is working on iOS. And of course it wasn't working because I didn't have it implemented all of the iOS platform things. So what I had to do was creating a Firebase app for iOS. And after I had done that, I could simply use the download the Google services info playlist file and then just add that to the runner folder. So another error I didn't notice before is that we didn't set the max water amount per day in the database that was simply defaulted to zero. So we simply set that to 2500 for now. The reason we had to do this was because when we added zero in the database, when it started to try to calculate the animation, it would do zero divided by zero, which is just infinite. So if we would take the water consumed and the total water divided by each other, which is just zero, zero, we would have a percent of infinite. And that wouldn't work and give us an error. We also had to go to the login page and just wrap everything in a safe area as I always have that bottom notch. So for Friday, I implemented the Google sign-in. So we can see that if we press the Google sign-in, we actually get to a user that already exists, which is my user. And we can see that the values are still there. So everything is actually synced with the account. So that everything is not just lost when we sign out of the application. So in the base of class, I just simply added two new functions. So then in the off block, when we used to implement the base off, it will force us to implement those two functions. So we can see that we have a function called sign in with user. 
So first off, we use signings, we have the Google user, and then we call authentication, which so we have the Google authentication object. Then we can simply call the get credential on the Google auth provider and then pass the necessary information. And then in the end, we could use the call Firebase off sign in with credentials and pass that in and we have a authenticated user. So the sync with Google is not implemented yet, but we just created the function to begin with. So that will just call and get the current user. And then we'll sign in with Google and then get the Google authentication object. Then you just set the credential and then call the link with credentials. And that will just link the anonymous user to the Google user. And now we had two ready functions that we could use call from different buttons. And I used simply used the sign in with Google on the sign in with Google button. And on Friday, I start to implement the anonymous user sync account. So if we see that when we sign in with the anonymous user, we could go to the settings button and use press sync account. And that would give us this pop-up. So if we then just select not now, we would just pop out of that. And then we just select Google sign in and that will actually sync the anonymous user with the Google user. So if we then try to sign out and then sign in, we would be linked to that account. So now if we take a look at that and actually sign out of the application and then sign in with Google again, we can see that the values are still there. So in the page container with the settings button, we simply added a new pop-up menu button, which is just a new enum with sync pop-up. And then we just display that if we are anonymous. So instead of just simply having a if, I switched that out to use a switch case. So if we are on the sign out, we'll simply sign out. And if we have the sync pop up, we'll display a new dialog. And then after we pop the dialog, we will simply get the current user and set state if that user is anonymous or not. So let's take a look at the sync account pop up. So the structure of this pop up is very similar to the custom amount pop up we implemented before. The only difference is that we're not using a actual input field. Instead, we're actually using a button instead. So we can see that we have a column which just return the padding and then the column for all the children's again. And then at the bottom, we have the flat button. The key difference is that we actually have an if else. So if we take a look at down in the middle of the function, we actually have an if we have a error message, we'll display the error message. And this is pretty much what the error message looks like. So if we would sign in and there would be something that is wrong, we could go and see the sync account. And if we would try to sync it, we will actually get this yellow bar displaying the actual error that is happening. So that error message box will simply replace the text in the else statement. And as we can see in the else statement, we simply have a text which returns just the information that the user should know. So we can see that we have this Google sign in button again, and we're simply calling the sync with Google function. We can see then again at the flat button, this is very, very similar, if not the exact same as we had on the custom amount pop up. We can see that we used on press, we just pop the page and then we just have some shapes to form and be the same as the dialog. We then used to set the color to shade of 300 in gray because we don't want this to be a primary action. And then we simply have the container with the text not now. And then for the error message box, we can simply see that we return a container with a box decoration. And inside this, we return a yellow shade 200 and circular shape of five. Then on the text, we simply have the error message. And the sync function is just calling the sync with Google. And after that, it just pop in the page and if it's not working, we're simply just setting the state with the error message. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell. On the screen, you can also see the last week's devlog, so make sure to check that out. And I also created a Discord down in the description, so make sure to join that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.